Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My mother-in-law doesn't like me, but I want her to. I'm married to her daughter, and it would just be better for both of us if we could be decent with each other. I got married to my wife four years ago. When we were dating, my mother-in-law didn't think I was right for her, because she had someone else she would have preferred. She tried to convince my wife, but her mind was made up, and we were in love. In my mother-in-law's words, she said that she didn't want to stand against love, so she would let her do what she wanted, as long as she was happy. I have been trying to figure out why she doesn't like me, and what I can do about it. She seems like a lovely person to everyone else, but I just can't get into her good books. I met my wife at a friend's business launch, and we dated for two years before getting married meaning that it's been about six years since I met my mother-in-law. I am well-to-do, I take care of my family very well, and make sure that we lack nothing. I treat her daughter right, and love her with all of my heart. But my mother-in-law not liking me seems like a thorn in my flesh, and I desperately want to get it out. My wife told me a few weeks ago that my mother-in-law would be remarrying soon. She just got engaged to the man she had been dating for a few years. She said that she and her sisters are deciding to sponsor the wedding so that her mom can enjoy herself and focus on her honeymoon. It seems like a perfect opportunity to do something so nice for her, so I say that I too would like to sponsor her wedding. My wife knows that I want to do it so that my mother-in-law could change her mind about me, so she tries to dissuade me. She reassured me that I am perfect for her, and she doesn't regret marrying me one bit. She loves all that has come from our marriage, with our two kids being the most important. I tell her that I want to do it, and I can very well afford to pay for her wedding, ten times over, so it's not a big deal for me. I also mention that her younger sisters are still trying to stand up on their feet, and we are good, so it's the right thing to do. We usually have family time at my mother-in-law's house, once a month, and we were going to be there that weekend so we decided to tell my mother-in-law there. At lunch, everyone kept saying how they were so happy for her because she was finally getting married after being alone since her first husband died. It was a bittersweet moment because we missed Big Man, as we called him, but we were also joyful that my mother-in-law was moving on. I was genuinely happy for her, not just because I wanted things to be better between us, but because I love my wife and everything that comes with her. My wife announced to everyone that we were going to sponsor the wedding. Everyone knew it was me, really, because my wife took some time off work until our kids were no longer toddlers. She recently just started getting into the online space, so her personal finances are not that stable yet. But we are good together. My mother-in-law was so happy, and she mentioned that they both needed it because they recently did the costing of everything they would require for the wedding, but realized that they were short so they were considering downsizing the wedding to cut down on some expenses. Her fiancé was there as well and appreciated it so much. He isn't much of a talker, so I wasn't expecting him to be as expressive as my mother-in-law. When I saw their excitement, I did a victory dance in my mind. I was finally getting somewhere. I'll keep you guys updated on how it goes. Plans have been underway, Everything was going smoothly, and my mother-in-law seemed to be accommodating me better. I guess I made the right decision to sponsor her wedding. We got the venue and the best vendors for the different aspects of the wedding. My sister-in-laws planned the wedding with my wife and came up with a reasonable budget. When I saw the amount, I thought it was a good investment, so I told them to go ahead. My wife is my voice of reasoning, so she asked me if I was sure I wanted to do this. And each time, my reply was the same. Yes, I want to. A week to the wedding, two of the major vendors cancelled on us. We had no cake or flowers to decorate. Everyone was panicking because we had to book most of the people weeks ahead. So we wondered how we were going to get someone on such a short notice, especially with the vision that my mother-in-law had of her wedding. She knew exactly how she wanted everything to look, and we were going to give her that her perfect wedding. 
Everyone went into beast mode, trying to find a worthy replacement. Some were either not good enough or too expensive. It was really frustrating. We finally made a deal with a vendor. She was one of the best in the city and she could handle both the cakes and the decorations, which is perfect. The only thing was that it cost an arm and a leg. We found her two days before the wedding and she was willing to do it for us. There was also a fee for late orders, which we had to pay. I had the money for it, but it was also going to take a lot more from me. At that point, I wish I wasn't adamant about handling the wedding alone. Earlier on, when some people had offered to chip in some money, I declined. I knew it wasn't wise, but I did it anyway. I paid for it. I could almost feel the money leave me. Once I sent the money to the vendor, I wish I hadn't. It was ridiculously expensive. My wife and I didn't spend up to a fifth of the initial budget, so you can imagine the cost when we added the cake and decorations from the new vendor. Yes, I know I have the money, but I was beginning to think of better ways I could have used that money. I could have invested it or bought real estate. I let it go because I didn't want anyone to notice that I was upset. In all of this time, my mother-in-law didn't acknowledge or thank me personally. She always generalized it. I thought it was because she felt weird because of the way she treated me. It got to me a little bit, though. By then, she must have figured I was doing all of this to get her to like me, but she wouldn't even try. Just a warm smile directed at me would have been enough. We all met at the, re we all met at the rehearsal dinner to put finishing touches and prepare for the next day. My mother-in-law asked for attention. She and her fiancé were so grateful for us. She spoke to everyone personally except me, and at different times referred to me in a demeaning way. Now, I was angry. I realized there was nothing I could do to change her mind about me. My wife sent me a silent apology with a knowing face. It was awkward because there was an elephant in the room. She couldn't have possibly forgotten the person who paid for everything and made sure she was going to have the wedding of her dreams. I stood up from the table and excused myself. I called all the vendors, including the ones for the venues, to cancel. I told them that something unexpected happened, so we couldn't make it for the wedding. That's what my mother-in-law gets for being heartless and ungrateful. My wife knew I had done something because I came back and acted like nothing had happened and I wasn't touched by any sly comments that my mother-in-law made about me. Instead, I smiled with satisfaction. Since she didn't like me now, I was going to give her some reason to actually hate me. After the rehearsal dinner, my wife asked me what I did, and I told her that I cancelled everything without a single remorse on my face. Her jaw dropped. She was disappointed, but I didn't care. It was late in the evening, so there was no way to call back to these places to say that we were still having the wedding. My wife broke the news and everyone went crazy. They were all upset with me, but I didn't respond because I was basking in the satisfaction of seeing my mother-in-law's face when she realized she wasn't going to have her dream wedding. Everyone, including her fiancé, agreed that what my mother-in-law did wasn't okay, but they said I went too far by cancelling the whole thing. I wasn't moved. I had had it up to my neck trying to get my mother-in-law to let me in and at least see me as a member of her family. I wasn't asking her to love me, just a decent relationship where we could coexist would have been okay for me. I went the extra mile for her wedding, but I deceived myself, thinking her attitude would change and I no longer wanted to do that. It's my money after all. Thank God we only made down payments to the vendors. I was okay with forfeiting it if they were not going to give a refund. Everyone got into active mode trying to figure out what to do. My wife wouldn't speak to me, so I left them to go home. When I got home, I felt guilty for what I did. I made the decision on the spot and didn't think about all the consequences. The deed has been done and there is nothing I can do about it. You're the a-hole. You didn't have to say that you would fund the wedding, only to opt out at the last minute. That's so wrong. She always didn't like you, so what difference did it make? I wouldn't like you too if I were her. You're the a-hole. Why would you cancel everything on the evening before the wedding? 
I think after you had to pay more than you planned, you just wanted the perfect opportunity to cancel it. That's low. Not the a-hole. She deserves what she got. You don't treat people like that and use them. If she really didn't like you, then she shouldn't have allowed you to sponsor her wedding. Your wife also could have put her in her place, but she didn't. Next story. My, 27F, best friend, 25F, Megan, from high school, is getting married this summer to her fiancé, 27M, who also went to the same high school as us. After high school, we went our separate ways due to education, but we still have kept in touch and gone on trips together. We grew up in a very conservative community. When I was outed as bi and was ostracized for it in high school, she was one of the only people in my life that didn't turn their backs on me. My folks kicked me out, and she lied to her parents about the reason to allow me to stay with them for a few months till my own parents cooled off. She has always been supportive of my relationships with other women. A while ago, I received my wedding invitation from her, and it allowed me to RSVP for a plus one if I wanted. I did so for my fiancé after asking her if she wanted to go with me. And we bought tickets to fly. Pretty expensive, given the distance. A couple of days ago, we talked on the phone. She wasn't in the loop on who I was dating or anything. I don't use most social media, as I find it bad for my mental health, so she was out of the loop even though my fiancé and I had just gotten engaged. After hearing about my fiancé and letting me gush about her, Megan, my friend, asked me to not bring my fiancé. I was hurt by this, so I asked her why. She told me that her parents and family would not be comfortable seeing me with another woman. She said that at this point, it's already taboo that she's inviting me in their eyes, but that she wants me there because I'm her oldest friend. I told her that I understood her concern, and I assured her that we wouldn't be doing any kind of overt PDA, just in case that was the issue. Megan said she was worried her parents or some other people from our home community would leave or make a spectacle of some sort. In the end, Megan still said that my fiancé attending with me was something she couldn't have, so I told my friend that it'd probably be best if I didn't attend at all. Megan told me that she really wanted me there and asked why I wouldn't consider not going with my fiancé. So... I told her that I'm not going to something that my fiancé and I were initially invited to, unless we can both go. My fiancé was excited to meet Megan for the first time too. My fiancé would understand if I went alone, but I know it hurt her, and I'm not going to do that. I too would be sad to be at an event, alone, that we should have gotten to attend together, if Megan's family weren't so bigoted. She told me that it's her wedding and she doesn't understand why I won't prioritize what she needs to be able to have all the people she cares about in her life, in attendance. She got off the phone with me and left by saying that she wouldn't be attending my own wedding, for which I had earlier asked her to be a bridesmaid for when I was catching her up. Not the a-hole. As Ellie Wiesel said, Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Megan is trying to be neutral to appease her family, but in reality, she's allowing their bigotry to continue. By going to the wedding without your fiancé, you would also be supporting their bigotry by changing your behavior to make them comfortable. This isn't about not prioritizing Megan, it's about prioritizing yourself, your partner, and your ability to exist in the world. Megan trying to put you back in the closet for her own comfort isn't fair. She wouldn't expect a straight friend to attend her wedding alone, so she shouldn't expect it of you. Not the a-hole. You can't claim to care about someone enough to want them at your wedding and at the same time ask them to hide who they are. It enables bigotry and it is every bit as insidious. She is not your friend. When I got married 14 years ago, my best man was a woman, my best friend, and about a third of the wedding party was either gay or bi, but gay-facing. My family, I'm sure, had problems with some or all of it, and some didn't show up. But to use a 2022 term, they could cope. Their problem was their problem, not mine. 
and I wasn't about to tell anyone to tone down or go back in the closet for a night for the sake of bigots. Don't fret about the tickets. Make a vacation about it. A better one. Next story. I, 38M, and my wife, 40F, have basically agreed to not introduce certain things, such as religion, to our kids, 12M and 8F, basically agreeing to let them discover things on their own and not having an influence one way or the other. When my son was nine, I took him to the racetrack, just like my dad did and my grandfather did, and he had a great time watching the horses run. At one point, I asked him which horse he likes and I placed a bet for him. He won. He actually won. It was only $9, but man, was he happy. When we got home, he went straight to his mom and said, Mom, look, I wanted the horses. Oh, she was pissed and told me to not introduce gambling at such a young age to him. I told him I didn't see a problem with it, but she said he will find out he likes gambling when he's older, not now. Again, let him discover things his own way and not by us influencing him. So, that was the last time I took him to the track. A few months ago, we were watching Hell's Kitchen, and he got really interested in seeing the head chef yelling and the other chefs cooking the amazing-looking food. The commentator kept saying, Hell's Kitchen Restaurant. My son asked me if there really is a Hell's Kitchen restaurant we could go to. I said there is, but, obviously lying to him, not sure where they are. Last week, my wife and I made plans to go to Las Vegas in May, and we let the kids know. My son got really excited and said, There's a hell kitchen in Las Vegas. Can we please go to it? Before I could answer for sure, my wife said, No, you are not ready for that kind of food. However, my son responded, But we ate at the Eiffel Tower last time. Again, my wife said no. When I asked her why not, her answer was, I don't like that guy, and why go when none of us like his food? Admittedly, I said I wanted to go there too. So I said, I'll take him, and our daughter too, if she wants to go. My wife argued, but I threw back that, you said let them discover and find things out on their own. Well, he's just done that. My wife argued that that wasn't the point. It was supposed to be about religion and other life lessons. I made the reservations for four in May, and my wife said if we go, she won't forgive me for going against his wishes. Will I be the a-hole if I took my son and maybe daughter to eat there? I forgot to mention, she didn't have a problem taking the kids to the Greyhound races when we lived in England, where again my son placed a bet here and there. And she didn't have a problem when we went to the Greyhound races in Mexico, where he didn't bet. Her reason? Those are fun. It's not about the money either. She can drop 1k on shoes, no problem. Not the a-hole. And your wife is disturbingly controlling about not being controlling. You're his parents. Do nothing and you've influenced them. Do everything and you've also influenced them. It's what parents do. Don't know what to tell you about the situation otherwise. If I had clear information that this was what parenting would be like, I would have chosen to do it with someone else. Not the a-hole. I grew up not having many fun experiences, and it negatively impacted me. You should allow your kids to have unique experiences, especially mundane ones, such as visiting a nice restaurant. I can understand why she disagrees with horse betting and gambling, but it's still a slippery slope. I think the two of you need to discuss and redraw the line for what discovering things on their own means, and to what extent you two would accommodate them in achieving said experiences. What is your wife really afraid of? I think family therapy would be helpful here. Not the a-hole. She sounds very controlling. I think you need to remind her that they are your kids too. If your son wants to go, and you do, then go. How is he supposed to know what he likes and doesn't like if he's never getting an opportunity to do things? He's missing out on a lot of things in his childhood just because your wife keeps saying no.